Hey, I'm Josh Mahoney, Chief Market Analyst at Scope Markets, back again, this time to talk about US CPI. Of course, we have it coming up on Thursday, the 11th of July. And the question mark here is, what should we expect? What's going to be the market reaction? Do we see underlying problems? Are we heading towards target? Are we likely to see the interest rates cut in September? A whole host of questions. Let's dig into the data. First and foremost, here's market expectations according to trading economics. It points towards a core inflation rate that remains at 3.4% amid a 0.2% month for month reading, which, you know, that's a decent number if it remains at 0.2, quite frankly, despite the fact that 3.4 and staying there is a little bit underwhelming, but we'll get into that. And then in terms of the headline number, 3.1 down from 3.3 with the 0% metric from last month on a monthly basis up to 0.1%, both of them very welcome figures if that's what we see this time around. So core staying put and staying in the mid threes, but headline CPI trying to make a push down towards the 3% barrier and hopefully get into the twos before too long. Um, But let's look at uh, exactly how things are shaping up. So first and foremost, here's an overview on the sort of key metrics uh, from an inflation perspective. We've got the PPI, the CPI, the core CPI and the core PCE. And we can see along the bottom the breakdown on on what is at what point. You know, frankly, it's the core PCE that provides us with the basis for potential rate cuts. Uh, We don't need to see a move to 2%, but we do need to see a pathway that points towards a return to 2%. Of course, when you've got CPI at 3.3 or 3.25, we've got core at 3.41. Neither of those are going to hit target anytime soon. And therefore, it comes down to that core PCE metric, which has continued to gradually move towards the downside. But this isn't something that's going to happen overnight. And there's likely to be bumps in the road. Now, the core CPI and the CPI numbers, despite the fact that everyone says, well, you know, it's the PCE numbers that or core PCE numbers that the Fed likes to use this is the headline you know fed metric well markets like the cpi number quite frankly that grabs the headlines to to a much greater extent than the core pc number so it's not to say that we can just ignore it and say oh it's fine that the cpi numbers are in mid threes markets do care very much and with cpi and core cpi both uh, significantly above that three percent target three uh, percent level We need to see them moving towards the downside to increase confidence within markets that the Federal Reserve will be able to cut and then maintain that period of uh, easing monetary policy because it's quite easy to enact a single cut. But if you see inflation moving in the wrong trajectory, they could quite swiftly have to turn around and stop that process. Of course, what we saw recently in terms of the dot plot from the Federal Reserve was that they moved from three rate cuts this year to just one, but they added one on to next year. So there is a perception that 2025 is going to see plenty of downside in terms of US interest rates. Inflation uh, moving in a downward trajectory is going to be part of that. In terms of the breakdown, here is the headline CPI uh, breakdown. We can see the last figure on a monthly basis, 0.006. That marks a big change from what we have been seeing prior to that. You can see the past, say, five months uh, seeing uh, above target monthly inflation. So that's a big problem. If we're going to get back down down to the 2% target, in all likeliness, we're going to have to wait a year because most of those big chunky prints are going to have to drop out quite frankly. Um, And when it comes to significant disinflation this year, well, most of it's probably going to come uh, when we see August and September stripped out. Now, the fact that we've got that 0.512 on the headline reading for the month of August does mean that for September, when people are hoping for an interest rate cut from the Federal Reserve, we could see a nice move towards the downside in headline CPI in the lead up to that. Um, But if you're looking at, say, let's say we see 0.1 this time around, let's say we replicate that when we see the August number drop out, well, we would drop by 0.4. If we're at 3% at the time, if we're at 3.1% at the time, 3.2, well, you're just going to be in mid to high twos. You're not going to be at target. And arguably, we would look forward and say, you're probably then going to have to wait a few months before we see much more disinflation from that. 
So that's looking ahead. I mean, in terms of this report, you can see 0.21 dropping out from last June. This time around, we're expecting to see a 0.1 figure. Uh, so mild disinflation, and that could happen next month if we see something similar, but there's going to be some underlying uh, factors to consider that I'll get into uh, later on. In terms of the 10-month annualized reading, this is kind of giving you an idea of where inflation might be around the time that we see that September uh, uh, Federal Reserve meeting. 3.4, in actual fact, that's probably overblowing it because we are heavily weighted towards uh, some of those big figures that we've seen in the last 12 months. And to annualize that out probably does a disservice considering the fact that markets are expecting to see a relatively low figure this time around and that maybe we're moving into a bit more of a trajectory where we see uh, below 0.2% monthly inflation figures as we saw last month and as we're expecting to see this time around. In terms of the core number, so core CPI at 3.41, significantly above that 2.57 for the core PCE, we can see the CPI reading that's dropping out is essentially 0 0.2, which one point, uh, sorry, 0 0.195. Uh, and we can see the last time around we saw CPI at 0 0.163. So you can see quite easily why if we look at the tra trajectory of monthly CPI, which is essentially these blue bars in the middle, last month was the lowest reading from a monthly perspective, maybe since August, you know, for, for like 10 months. So the idea that we're going to see much disinflation uh, right now, considering we've got a 0 0.2 dropping out last time around, we saw 0 0.16. Even if we replicate that, you only see very moderate downside in terms of inflation, uh, in terms of core CPI. Uh, so it looks likely that we're probably going to have to stay still for a bit. The core CPI is probably going to remain above 3%. Uh, for the rest of this year, in my mind, uh, certainly into Q4. Um, and then maybe we start getting some movement around then, you know, September's a decent number, November, you know, we could see some some downside moves towards that three and hopefully below that 3% mark. But we're still some way away from seeing any sort of move that might give us an idea that core CPI is going to hit that 2% target. But then, you know, if you're looking at a core number, you probably want to look at that core PCE metric. And, and that certainly does provide the basis for a greater optimism. But then again, if you're looking at the core PCE number, well, look at that January figure, right? 0 0.5 for one month alone. That's a quarter of the whole year's target in a single month. You're probably going to need to see some of those Q1 figures stripped out. So that means a fair old wait before we think that we're going to see core PCE down to target. But then there's a question mark of, do we see a trajectory that points towards a return to target? And that means in the fourth quarter, if we're seeing the com coming months, seeing 0 0.1s, 0%, things like that, then they can build a story around the idea of, well, we know that once January, February, March all strips out, the current trajectory we're on at the moment means that we're going to see a breakdown to target. So what happens now is absolutely key in building the basis for saying that we're on target once we see those later down the line, big figures stripped out to get back down towards the 2% area. Core CPI is going to take longer. Core PCE, much more likely to occur. Here's a breakdown in terms of the sort of underlying factors that have been influencing inflation and a projection from Goldman Sachs. Now, the projection is that they're going to hit 2.8% by year end. That means that we're going to wait for, you know, the best part of five, six months, and we're going to get back to 2.8, which is still way, way away from the uh, actual 2% target. The reason that I like this chart is that it highlights some of the different things that play into it and also the weighting aspect. Now, you know, I could show you a, a, a graph that shows you the, the different monthly growth or, or shrinking um, elements of different parts of the inflation picture. But this chart does a particularly good job because it shows you that something like shelter in particular plays an absolutely massive role. And if we see shelter moving towards the downside in a meaningful manner, that's likely just going to drive everything else towards the downside. So it is on a downward trajectory, but it's very slow. People complain about the idea that the methodology that's being used, uh, owner's equivalent rents, is not fit for purpose. But that's what's being used as it stands. And we're seeing this very gradual move towards the downside. It's like turning a, a tanker around rather than turning around a, a, a canoe, 
it's going to take some time and it's long lasting uh, in its nature. So very gradual and slight move towards the downside. It's notable that we've seen some downside effects recently in terms of energy, as we can see here in the green. So energy can be a positive, can be a negative. That's why uh, often it gets stripped out because it's so volatile and it's not the kind of thing that really gets impacted by uh, decision making from the Federal Reserve. You, you, you can cut interest rates. It's not necessarily going to suddenly uh, ramp up the price of energy or cut the price of energy in a dramatic manner. That generally occurs on a sort of globalized basis. Um, so energy is going to be an important factor as well in terms of driving that headline inflation. But really, much of the inflation that has been happening of late is down to uh, the uh, services side of the US economy. Uh, and that's going to be really key going forward. So shelter, as I highlighted, it's a third of the CPI reading. And you can see it back here, right? Look how big that big orange section is. And you compare it to the rest of it. Arguably, that looks like even more than a third. But according to the latest metrics, it's a third of uh, the weighting for the CPI figure. And because it's also elevated, that's why it looks to take up a, a disproportionately larger part of the entire CPI uh, sort of metric as a whole. And so we can see here on the top, I've got a number of different things up in here. So what's core CPI? 3.42 in the middle. Then we can see... Why are we seeing elevated inflation? Well, it's driven really heavily by shelter. And we can see that in the light blue line at 5.41. We are moving towards the downside, much like we've seen in that previous chart with this orange section. We're moving towards the downside, but it's very gradual in nature. And it points towards it taking a fair amount of time for it to get back in the threes. I don't expect it to get back down to the twos. And we, we don't necessarily need it to. Prior to the pandemic, it was in the 3% kind of area. So that's what we need to see shelter moving back down to. If you strip out shelter, how much inflation do we have aside from that? Well, the core reading excluding shelter is at 1.87. So below that 2% target, that's not to say, well, you can just ignore shelter because it clearly is a very important component. That's why it takes up such a huge amount, because if you're to look at your outgoings at the end of the month, it's going to be your housing costs that are going to be a, a, a significant chunk of that. And then services, less shelter. This is something that I've added to this chart just today, because as you can see here, 4.97, we have seen a resurgence of late in terms of services inflation aside from shelter it's not just a shelter story and we have seen that rebound and that is a problem all of these three lines are pointing towards the downside apart from services less shelter so that's a really key part of the economy to be watching so when you're looking at say the ism pmi release alongside the ism manufacturing uh, sorry ism services and ism manufacturing pmi is that services part that really we need to keep a lid on uh, because if we see weakness in the services sector that could help drive down some of the prices and actually could be good for the economy over the medium term it allows the federal reserve to cut interest rates sooner rather than later in terms of the three month change of of shelter this is just you know, when we're talking about this, this is a year on year reading this 5.41, the light blue line. And therefore, I just wanted to show you on a more granular level exactly what's happening in terms of the shelter metric. And rather than sort of month on month, I thought I'd broaden it out a bit, giving that three month view. We can see it did spike, but it's starting to come down of late in recent months. Uh, so it's starting to come back down towards that pre pandemic range, which is that uh, shaded band that I have on that bottom section. This is another absolutely key part of it, and it is the energy component. Uh, generally, your headline CPI is going to be driven by a number of things, but the volatility of energy means that this can play a really key role. So what have we got on this chart? So we've got the percentage change on a monthly basis um, of WTI, and that's the sort of... Uh, jagged line here the, the the light blue line and as you can see of course we don't just wait every month to get that figure and that's why we see uh we can see a, a lot more granularity to that movement um but as you can see it correlates very strongly with both the percentage change uh, on a monthly basis of your energy component of cpi which is the orangey yellow line depends on your eyes uh but also CPI as a whole, right? I mean, there's a correlation between all three of them here. So it does highlight the fact that the trajectory of uh, WTI or US crude will give you a leading indicator of where we might move on a monthly basis for the, sh the energy component, but also CPI as a whole. And so we can see that 
the downside move in terms of CPI gave us that 0% metric last time around, right? Um, but what have we seen? We've seen WTI moving towards the upside. We've seen uh, that energy component sort of rolling over a bit. What we're looking at here is potentially a 0.1 month on month reading for CPI. So that points towards a potential sort of bottoming out. As we can see in the past, you know, you see a drop down towards that 0%. Uh, figure and then we start to regain ground we don't generally see a massive spike up to say 0.4 monthly metric but the problem here is that we're looking likely to see something above zero percent as we've seen energy prices bottom out and that's why markets are expecting that 0.1 but what's notable is that there's a good chance we're then the following month going to see that energy uh, price surge playing into this monthly figure and likely giving us a higher than 0.1 reading for next time around, potentially something like 0.3. Uh, so it depends on how energy plays out between now and then. Uh, but certainly, you know, this time around, maybe it's a, you know, calm before the storm kind of moment because we've got that period where energy prices bottomed out for a little bit. So there's a good chance that we tick a little bit higher, like we're pointing towards 0.1%. But there is a warning sign in there that, you know, just because we've seen 0% CPI and now we're expecting to see 0.1% CPI doesn't mean that this is going to be the new norm. Because if you look at this energy price movement, it points towards uh, next month uh, seeing a figure that's above that 0.1 and potentially uh, people get thrown off a little bit because they thought they were going to see 0% to 0.1 monthly metrics from here onwards. And that's not going to happen. And it looks like we could see a, a rebound from then on in. So whether it factors into this report or next month's report, it does look like that monthly uh, headline CPI figure is going to move towards the upside uh, before long. In terms of market expectations from the Federal Reserve, we have seen over the course of the past week, uh, a sort of repricing towards that September rate cut. In part, that comes because of the weakness that we've seen in terms of the US jobs market. We saw weakness in terms of the ADP numbers. We've seen upside in terms of the unemployment claims. We saw the jobs job openings figure coming better than expected. But then we realized we saw a pretty hefty uh, downward revision to the prior month. And then a similar kind of story in terms of the payrolls. We saw a payrolls figure above the 200K mark. And everyone thought, great, you know, US economy is not doing too bad, actually. Um, but then you look and they've revised the two prior months with pretty hefty downside revisions. Uh, so it pretty much undone uh, all of the sort of positivity that we saw in that headline number. That helped lift expectations for a September rate cut. And if we see inflation this time around remaining low, markets are expecting that 0.1 metric on the headline number in particular, that could continue that good story around this idea that, you know, the US economy is weakening a little bit. We've seen inflation with a lid on at the moment with 0.1 monthly inflation, the downside move in terms of the headline number, if that comes to fruition. And therefore, people feel increasingly confident around that September rate cut possibility in terms of how to trade this let's just quickly jump into the chart for gold and this is a really interesting one what we saw with the week just gone uh, is a really nice strong move towards the upside we're pulling back as we start the new week but as we can see you know this is friday we can go back to the prior friday so this is this is the week just gone right starting down at this sort of uh, consolidation phase rallying up, consolidation, rallying up. We're pulling back now. But crucially, if we look at, say, the four-hour chart, we can see the symmetrical triangle formation has now been broken with a rally up through 2368, providing us with that bullish mindset. So how do we play it from here? It looks likely, and certainly if we do uh, signal the, you know, if we see downside move for inflation, People are likely to feel more emboldened around that September rate cut. That should be good for precious metals. It should be bad for the US dollar. It should be good for equities if that's how it plays out. Um, but of course, like I said, there's some warning signs beyond here in terms of the potential resurgence for inflation uh, on a monthly basis uh, with the upside in terms of energy prices. Nonetheless, we're talking about the here and now. We've seen a pop out through trendline resistance, through horizontal resistance, we've pulled back into what was the breakout level, which is 2368, now providing support. So as long as we remain above this near-term swing low, which is 2348, I think this near-term pullback looks a potential opportunity for the bulls to continue on the wider trajectory, but also continue to follow through on this symmetrical triangle breakout. The caveat here is that one man's symmetrical triangle it is another man's consolidation. And you could say this level up here, uh, you know, 
could be you could be looking at a range essentially you could be saying that you know down here we've got this low so we've got the bottoms that are generally capped around this kind of area sort of 2298 down to 2295 and then you can say the top end despite this big breaker you could say we're generally capped around this area 2387 2370 kind of area so we haven't really seen a big sort of breakout and follow through yet for gold is this the moment for that to come to fruition let me show you the monthly time frame this is the monthly time frame the trend for gold is up over the long term we do see gold as a bullish market but we have protracted multi-year sell-offs we have protracted multi-year basing patterns but generally gold does well at times when we see interest rates being cut when we see quantitative easing uh, coming into play so with the fact that we're approaching potential rate cuts from the federal reserve i'm bullish for gold we're pulling back into this uh, breakout level uh, let's see if we find support here and in particular if we rally back up through this near-term resistance 2392 that could point to us having ended this consolidation phase and potentially entering a new bullish breakout phase for gold so one to keep an eye out on in terms of dollar yen, this is a really interesting one, right? So if we start to become confident that inflation is declining and we're going to see the Federal Reserve cutting rates in a meaningful manner, not just one, and then suddenly they realize inflation hasn't gone away and then they stop. That could be really interesting as a juxtaposition against what's happening in Japan, because in Japan, they're pretty much saying we're going to taper our JGBs or government bond purchases or reinvestment we're also likely to hike interest rates. If that comes at the time when we're seeing in inflation declining, US economy starting to come under pressure, we could see dollar yen start to roll over. Um, that certainly hasn't been the trend. So the trend is your friend, but you know, I am aware of some, some of the underlying drivers and the possibility of that trend coming under pressure. Uh, and notably what we're seeing over the near term is this nice trend of lower highs and lower lows. So we are starting to see some sort of fading of that trend quite how long this near-term intraday downtrend, as you could call it, over probably over the last week, I think it's lasted. Uh, how long that's going to last, I don't know. And certainly, you know, I don't necessarily think the inflation is solved per se, uh, but I do see a position in a few months' time where uh, maybe not September, but towards the end of the year when we see inflation coming down below 3% and also a pointing towards a possibility that they say, hey, you know, January, February, March, we've got some big prints coming out. We can see a trajectory back down to target. Uh, and that's when we can feel more confident. At the moment, there's still some significant questions. And certainly that uh, energy uh, component's very interesting uh, alongside that shelter component. But so look out for this. If we see an upside move in terms of inflation, a bigger than expected inflation metric, then the bulls will come back in uh, play once again, in my mind. And we see this trend coming back in. So we'll be looking for a rally up through your prior swing high to essentially negate this near term pullback. Uh, so 161.12, 161.33. But until that happens, we're looking at the potential good news story this week with potential for downside move in terms of headline inflation. And if that comes to fruition, then we could see an extension of this downside move for dollar yen, especially as we see uh, the Bank of Japan increasingly uh, pointing towards the possibility of a rate hike in July. So certainly that's something that probably will start to garner more attention as we go forward. And finally, it's the Nasdaq. Of course, the tech sector is going to be really in focus. We're seeing the second quarter earnings season getting underway. Um, and so we will be aware of that. We'll be watching it. Markets are going to be increasingly wary of what might happen if we see a slowdown in the growth of uh, some of these big earnings from semiconductors, uh, AI stocks, NVIDIA. You know, that's going to be really important. But as things stand, it remains uh, the outperformer. It continues to break into record highs. And certainly if we see a monetary policy potentially rolling over, that gives people uh, or rates rolling over, that gives people uh, optimism that some of these sort of higher risk plays, I guess. I mean, these growth names generally do well um, at times where we see the market doing well and people fe feeling very bullish. Uh, and that generally comes when we're seeing things like uh, easing from the central banks uh, with money flooding into the market. So unless we break this 20130 swing low, the bull trend for the Nasdaq does continue a pace. And certainly if we see inflation coming in relatively low, as is expected, certainly on the headline number, it'd be even, even better if we saw it on the core number.
then we're likely to see further upside for the Nasdaq. But bear in mind, if we were to see a pop in terms of inflation, uh, then you could see some selling pressure coming into play. But like I said, you know, this is a market that is very much on the front foot week upon week upon week. It continues to move towards the upside. And therefore, when we do see pullbacks, generally they're relatively fleeting because people soon enough just see it as a buying opportunity and want to stick more money into your Amazons or your Alphabets or your NVIDIA. So uh, generally it does have that underlying bullish trend within it uh, that if we saw a sort of marginally stronger inflation print, uh, any near-term downside people would probably soon enough see as a buying opportunity. Um, but like I said, the near-term support level is 20130. Unless we break that level, it uh, looks like the pools are going to be charged once again for the NASDAQ or the Tech 100.